God, I hate movies. <laughs> okay, not really. <laughs> but, you know what? For every yin, there's a yang. For every, for every good, there's a bad. That's the beauty of the world of movies. For every good movie that you see, there's also a bad movie that you might come out hating it, but you will have the pleasure to ripping it apart. This, uh, looking back, this year, it wasn't very good for Hollywood. Uh, I mean, most of this, uh, most of the movies that they were expecting box office, they failed. They didn't. They didn't make enough money. Um, people's expectations. Uh, they get sometimes tired, or they fail so preach that they, they they don't feel like it. I mean, they're defenders, yeah, but I I will say that Hollywood things uh, weren't that great this year. From at least from what I can tell, I'm no expert on that. It is, this is. This is kind of like a passing by uh, uh, painting uh, for, for that. But no matter the reason, since I love watching movies, I also had to stumble with some of the garbage that I had to go through. And just like I did with the best movies, I made a list. And how funny. How funny that this year, making a worst movie of the year list, it was easier compared to the best movie of the year. Is it me because I'm becoming very cynical? I, I don't know. I don't even know. That list was easier this year. So, let's not waste any time. Here is the list of the stinkers, the garbage, the movies that make me feel bad, dirty, disgusted, and overall, not exactly a good time when you expect it's a good time. Some, some, some of them I did it to myself, but you know what? I like, I, I even like, this is kind of like part of the, of the hobby. I like, I like that aspect, <laughs> to be honest, in, in an ironic way. Sometimes bashing a movie is, 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 is fulfilling, especially when they deserve it. Because somebody has, somebody else has to tell those uh, filmmakers where, where they screw the pooch. So here it goes. Just like always, let's start out with the with the with the three dishonors. The ones that didn't make it on my list. The ones that I thought they weren't bad enough to put it on the list. The ones that they couldn't fit on a top ten, but still deserve to be mentioned. Alright, here it goes. My number one dishonor is a movie that I didn't even make a vlog out of it. I, because I watched that, I didn't have plan to watch that movie. It's just that while I was on, on vacation, uh, my, uh, a relative of mine invited me to the movies. And I was like, sure, why not? So we went to see this movie because of the, because we heard about the reputation that it had and it had people talking and when i finished watching it wasn't necessarily that i, I thought it was the worst movie that there is but i will say that it was probably the most pretentious of all movies and like i said because of vacations i didn't do a vlog out of it but i did talk about it uh, during my Saw X uh, review. And that movie is none other than Sound of Freedom. 
where can I start about this one? With, with the same people who, uh, who were behind the Passion of Christ, which is something that I didn't see. They had this one that somehow has kind of like the same effect. They wanted you to make you feel aware of, of, of this big problem that the world has. In this case, uh, uh, the exploitation of minors. And you know what? For what it's worth, it is a, it is a movie that has a novel cost. But where do it fail? Let's go first a little bit with the positive. It is well acted. At least, at least the beginning of the movie is intense. It had a great idea. It, uh, and well, I wanna say that it has some good intention, but somehow it feels so full and it had this big ego that it, it was, it even promotes itself to, to feel like it is the most important movie of the year, or it kind of begins to think that, wow, this one opened my eyes about the exploitation of children and, and all that stuff. Um, Explo these kind of exploitations is of, tra of, hu of you know, human trafficking. It happened all over the world, and movies did that uh, beforehand. I saw a movie called Traffic that kind of tried to do the same with, uh, with the exploitation of women, and it didn't cause the same impact that this movie had. That one probably is because, well, children are the most vulnerable. But you know what? It was interesting. At least I'll give it that. It was interesting. And it's an interesting case when you see the behind the scenes. But why did I put it on one of the lowest uh, and actually one of the worst movies I have seen this year? Again, it's for the full pretentiousness because they want to paint the guy. I forgot the name. They want to paint the guy like a freaking hero. And uh, there is, uh, uh, although there is, uh, there it, they kind of, um, it shows the manipulation of, of movies on how you can make a simple person who had an interesting backstory with an interesting uh, goal, and then inflate its ego to the point that the the movie started to collapse in the final twenty minutes where it could easily be a, uh, an interesting biopic, but nope, they decided to turn into Rambo in, in the last 20 minutes, and that, I couldn't even take it seriously. What was that about? I'm not even gonna talk about, you know, the, uh, the, the suspicious, you know, way of promoting the movie at the end, in which, in, in which the uh, what was the name of the actor? Uh, well, whatever. He he was like, hey, if you want to support, if you want to su uh, support these people, uh, make this, uh, pay pay this people, pay money to people who are not gonna watch that movie or something like that. That was kind of like weird. I actually prefer uh, in. Uh, I actually prefer, you know, in, in my in my country, Ecuador, where it's, uh, they show a clip of the of the real guy uh, telling him that he made an operation in in our country. Uh, it wasn't it, it. I mean, it was interesting, but mostly the execution of the movie is it was a little bit too pretentious for my taste. That that this is why I have to put it at least on uh, on the list of of, the, of worst movie uh, worst movie of the year. Um, it, 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 they say that it's the movie that, uh, that Hollywood didn't want you to see. Mm, not exactly Hollywood, but, uh, it, at least it gave, it made people talk. So I can, this is why at least I, I, I couldn't put it, uh, at one of my top 10. Let's continue on. My number two is, it was almost recently. It is a movie that, well, it has some turd on it. And that is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Man, just when I was, how can I say, reevaluating if I like the first, the first Aquaman movie, I don't, I kind of, 
uh, the more I think about the first movie, I, I, I'm, I, I thought it was kind of like forgettable. And some people will they still kind of defend and saying that it was one of the better ones. I still kind of do. Uh, compared to the other Zack Snyder movies, uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the better ones. Uh, uh, Jason Momoa do his, does his best. And also, the movie's reputation was already harmed big time uh, because of the, of the shady corp uh, corporate decisions, the reshoots, the trial of Amber Heard, and her reputation. Uh, it, it was it was something that it had a lot against on its own. And finally, when the movie came out, you will notice uh, uh, the very uh, the very very messy editing, the uh, the not so good dialogue, uh, the reshoots was was inconsistent. Many people kind of uh, kind of begin to say that there is a chemistry between the, our protagonists, but I in my video I disagree that that there there. Uh, that there wasn't, there was no chemistry. Um, uh, the plot, uh, the plot has some holes that, that I, I, I just feel lazy to trying to remember. Um, so why didn't it went to my top ten list? Because there was one that it was worse. Uh, uh, I'll get to that when it gets through with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I can't deny that. This was this was uh this was this was definitely the final nail on the coffin for the Zack Snyder DC uh, DC universe DC universe. That's uh, and I thought that we 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 had that one. I'm not exactly kind of like a big big fan about this, but I just hope that this is really the final nail up on that coffin. I did complain a lot that it had a bad start. I had a bad start. Let's just cross our finger that the the next uh, the, the next time that they're gonna reboot uh, a DC Cinematic Universe, they can uh, they do better than that. And l let's not pick up the, how can I say that uh, the mistakes that of the Zack Snyder thing, and of course some other elements. My number three, I tried to put this uh, this one on, on my big list, but I found others that were worse. But the more I see about the reputation of this one, it surprised me that people like that one, but not me. So why? Tell me why it's not on the worst mo movie of the list for other people. Because I don't get the blackening. Is it, is the problem me? I don't know. Maybe I'm not black enough for this movie. I don't, what did I say? I, I'm not exactly that kind of person and try to avoid that. But, this is a movie that came from the mind who gave us Tom and Jerry. And while I was watching that movie, I tried to be open-minded. But what it failed, the humor, I didn't catch it. The story is a waste of potential. It, I thought it was going to be about a cursed board, uh, board game. But no. The movie was mostly being a satire about the horror tropes of, uh, 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 of well, black people in horror movies, for lack of better words. And that part wasn't exactly uh, kind of like clever. I was like, and maybe it's me, because maybe I don't get it. I didn't get it. But I found it, um, still I found it unfunny. The characters were obnoxious. 
it wasted the opportunity of a haunted lab board game. And the more I think about it, there are kind of like plot holes that I, uh, I'm just struggling to kind of try to forget this movie. And I was so disappointed by, even by the ending. What was the point? Maybe you have a better explanation why this movie's good. Maybe you, you get it. Maybe you get the joke. I don't know. And probably next year I'm going to have that same opportunity. I'm not going to say because this is kind of like a big uh -oh, can of worms, but once you see trailer, you you know what you know. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna know what I'm what I'm referring to. But uh, but you know what? I'm not gonna fault any people who like that movie. But not just me. I, probably I didn't get it. But at the end of the day, they, this is my third dishonorable mention. And and still to this day, I don't know who's the blackest. Ready? It's time to take a deep breath. These are the 10 movies that boil my brain. Let's get this started. My number 10 is a movie that I had to think this through if I wanted to put it on the worst of the list. Funny thing because I kind of gave it a positive a, a positive re uh, review when I saw it. I was having it in a positive light but then it got me thinking. I was rethinking and I was actually fear fearing if I had to put it on my list. But you know what? Ironically, this is probably this is showing showcasing to be a claim, and many people consider it one of the best movies of the year. Brace yourself, because you're probably gonna hate me for this. My number ten worst movie of the year. Be glad that it's just number ten. It's Barbie. How dare me, you misogynistic pig. I'm gonna go back at you. I was, I gave this movie a positive light because I get the satire. I get, I get the interesting special effects. I get what he was doing. But the more I begin to think about this movie, I, I found some pretentious and malicious m message behind it. And it felt kind of like not, I don't know, something really, really bothered me. Um, I was actually pondering if I had to put it on the worst of my list. I, I, I was kind of like, should I? Shouldn't I? But then a relative came, and that relative told me that it wasn't uh, that it didn't like the movie either. He didn't like it. It it, it uh, she's uh, that that relative is not as passionate as me, but she un but that character that relative understood me and told me, "Don't be afraid. If you didn't like it, you have your reasons." Just tell them. Something, something in the lines like that. I'm not exactly kind of like a uh, tape recorder for that. And then it, it hit me that I did have to put Barbie on the list. It may have its millions. Good for you. It, it, it had, you know, people talking. Good for you. But the more I think about it, this is this is a shallow propaganda 
feminist propaganda that the uh, that it wouldn't have been so bad if it was kind of like fair uh, having a fair criticism but where they uh, were where it becomes more uncomfortable when you think about it it's mostly about the treatment of ken ken was treated horribly and even treated like a dumb guy and it was a pretty outdated view on a um, man and they wanted to showcase kind of like chauvinistic pigs and something like that or they have kind of like this big eagle and all this man hating it's it was so cringy now that i think about it that that it it i i, I don't know i couldn't find it uh, the more I think about it, I was like, did I find this funny? Well, to some people it does, does, but it's mostly because there is a charm between Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, and they think that they were kind of like hilarious, but I don't know, there was kind of, I find it kind of like cringy that they just wanted to cram into your head about, you know, about th that the world is male, domin do male dominated and female, and there is kind of like this female empowerment in that, Honestly, honestly, this is the least that, that Hollywood has because other franchises is trying to cram up this that it feels uh, that it 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 feels how can I say like uh, that we're seeing preachiness instead of you know, uh, how can I say uh, uh, it, it feels like preaching instead of watching uh, you know a movie uh, and and you know what I get it. Barbie was always a feminist icon. I get it. Yeah, but then did they kind of push out, you know, this Ken battle? And and having Will Ferrell in one of his most embarrassing mo uh, moments in, 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 in movie history. I don't know. Although, although, at least I put it at number 10 because I've seen worse. And for the movie's credit, there are some moments that it's kind of ridiculously hilarious because I get what it was trying to do, and this and the special effects, uh, it uh, it it don't reflect uh, it reflect the doll. But sorry, uh, there's uh, I think that the more you deconstruct this movie, it's it's not it's not as good as you you thought about it. So basically, this is kind of like a redemption for me because because I wasn't overly negative on, 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 on my vlog. Maybe I should have been a little bit harsher, but maybe if I went a little bit more harsh, I was going to be accused of a misogynist. Uh, but you know, every people like to point finger here and there. I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I just thought that the movie felt a little bit mis misled. Uh, uh, you know what? I think I have talked enough about this movie. Now let's go on with my number one, nine, my number nine. <laughs> uh, but uh, get used to it because usually my my worst reviews, these videos take even longer because I get more passionate fashion in this movie. My number nine, mm, man, this is one where I had I wanted it to be good, but pff, you wish. I give it to Wish. You call that a 100-year celebration of, uh, of the beloved Disney? Y you wish. Let me reaffirm you that I don't hate Disney. It's the practices that I've been doing. See this? It's a Stitch. It's a Disney property. I love Lilo and Stitch. But lately, not good movies are not getting that good. And... Wish, um, I couldn't say that I was exactly mad, but just disappointed. But the more I dig this movie, it was I, it, the disappointment get higher and higher, and you notice, you know, the flaws and of the cinematography, the behind the scenes that there was kind of like this catastrophe uh, uh, of pretentious people. 
uh, the story, you find holes, and uh, the main character is not that interesting. Uh, that uh, Chris Pine as the villain, uh, uh, the King Magnifico, he had some interesting ideas, but then out of the blue, he becomes a villain. Then, uh, then a movie that is about wishes, it 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 doesn't do that very well. The stakes were really low. It, it tries so hard to be an Easter egg hunt. And then we have this ending that is a total deus ex machina. And not, it's a whole how hollow soulless movie. And I didn't want it to put it on my list, but it, I, the more I think about it, it still deserves to be considering that it tries so hard to be a celebration of 100 years of the studio that, uh, 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 man, I, I, that, is this the best you could do? And by the way, I finally saw the Once Upon a Studio. Many people are clamoring uh, this as, as a great short that it is uh, uh, that it does celebrate 100 years of the of the studio. And guess what? I wasn't exactly fond of it. Disney Theater. No, I'm not. Uh, Here's the reason. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. But because Disney is doing all these remakes and the shady practices and all these things, for some reason I saw Once Upon a Studio as an insincere, soulless machination that it, 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 I found it dishonest. It, it was a really dishonest. Uh, it, uh, considering the things that it was doing, I, there's no sincerity in that in that short. But I'll give it this: at least it does a better job for celebrating hundred years of the studio than 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 Wish did. Although I do admit that there are two parts that I really like on that on that on that Once Upon a Studio. First, I like the uh, I like the Donald Duck's uh, reaction to uh, 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 to Hundred Yard Dash. Uh, you know, the slot from Zootopia. But it's mostly because I'm a big fan of Donald Duck. And I'm not gonna lie that uh, Mickey watching the the, uh, the photo of Walt Disney with, with sad eyes, that was actually good. Uh, that was actually good. Although in my mind, Mickey, it was like, oh, what have they, what have they done to your dream? Especially when you when you give out movies like Wish, uh, 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 soulless, uh, soulless by the book, not that good story. Uh, I, if I had a if I had one wish for this movie, it's just that. Just forget that this was a your hundred anniversary movie. It doesn't even. Uh, but. Again, that's just wishful thinking. Number eight. Remember that I said that there was something worse than Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom? Well, let's give this to the Flash. I was, I wasn't overly hyped for that one, as much as people were, because they were like, "Oh my God, Michael Keaton is gonna be there as Batman." Yeah, so what? I love Batman, but you know what? This is just a nostalgia trap, just like Wish tried to do, which is all, which is also a nostalgia bait. And the, in the case of The Flash, it didn't help out that we had Ezra Miller, who, much like Amber Heard, Ezra Miller kind of stank his own his whole reputation by doing all these criminal acts and still Warner Brother they just try to keep him up because well replacing him will be a costly thing. Oh by the way you don't get one Ezra Miller you get two and one that it tries to be a strength man and the other one who is kind of obnoxious and I will always remember that he has this weird laugh. It was, uh, what was it? The laugh it was like oh. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it was kind of like Nicolas Cage in one way or another. And that even sounds a little bit insulting to Nicolas, Nicolas, Nicolas Cage. 
Okay, what does this one have? Well, it, it, is, it has a bloated story. It has multiverse problems, multi-timeline stuff. People were disappointed by, you know, the Batman thing and, uh, and the Supergirl thing. The CGI, the more I think about it, it was... Uh, it, it, it was kind of like Uncanny Valley, especially the baby's part, which many people talk about. And then there's this try hard moment where they wanted to put to to appease the fans by giving us a CGI super, uh, Christopher Reeve Superman and uh, what was it, Supergirl? I don't remember the name of the actress. Uh, sorry. And this Nicolas Cage Superman that it, it was kind of like a sideline thing. So, um, well, there's also the George Clooney Batman that he makes a cameo. I wasn't exactly a fan of that movie. It's still, I thought that this was gonna be the final nail on the coffin for uh, for DC, for the DC universe, but no, that was for Aquaman. Uh, but at least I'll say that the final moment between the Flash and his mother were was a little bit touching. Uh, this is the kind of like this, a small positive that I can give it to that. But either way, um, uh, uh, the memories of that movie will go off in a flash. Number seven. Speaking of speaking of rebooting a franchise, why did they keep? What are they cap face on this guy? I mean, he botched Halloween, and now let, let him botch another franchise again with The Exorcist, Believer. That was such a boring movie. And you know what? This is one of, I, I don't think The Exorcist, one of those movies that it needed a sequel. I rewatched the original uh, for my for my Halloween special, and and despite my my thoughts, it still holds up, especially for the more religious sen uh, sentimentals. I don't know about the other sequels. The only one that I saw at the beginning, but that's it. But then came this one, that. It could have been its own thing, but it didn't. They wanted to push out these characters. They're boring. And much like The Flash, not only do you get one possessed person, you get two. And and they have this try-hard moment in which they wanted to combine a lot of religious views in order to, you know, save all these, these two girls. But then... The problem begin to mess up when when not only it just get boring, it gets it gets so inconsistent and so and so uh, conveniently just for the, making a sequel for the sake of being a sequel. Uh, like for example, they say, "Oh, this is the same demon that possessed Linda Blair." How do you know? Is that it? How do you know? It could be any other demon. And then they bring this, uh, what was it, the actress who played the mom, and um, she's just shoehorned into the movie saying that, oh, I wrote the book, I know about exorcism. You just, you didn't, you barely did anything on the other movie, you were just a helpless mother. And then to blame, uh, and then to blame the patriarchy for not letting you see the, uh, uh, the exorcism, uh, let alone because knowing that make it uh when you make an exorcist is convenient to not let civilians uh, be uh be on the presence of something that can be too dangerous what are you playing at movie and it's from the same guy who gave us the reboots of of halloween the first one was okay but then kills and ends they slowly butcher the whole thing And now you bring us this that it was so boring, and and, and 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 you know what? I'd rather have this movie be boring than than, uh, than being a pretentious sequel. And that's what you get. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm not gonna believe that the sequel is gonna be that good. Number six. 
welcome, uh, welcome, welcome to the to the wonderful world of Disney reboot. Congratulations, Little Mermaid 2023. You're on the list of the worst. Another Disney remake that they try so hard to to make live action imitate animation just to make some social commentary because you this is what you're playing at Disney at this point or to make to make it kind of like a stretch unnecessary stretch to that remember that I said that that once upon a studio was a little bit insincere because it's because of movies like that 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 kind of proves you uh, you don't the, uh, you, uh, uh, the insincerity of once upon a studio because you make movies like that that they try to uh, try to erase the effort of animators that that made those movies. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing the actress who played uh, Ariel in this one, because that part I don't even care. And besides, for the fault of the movie, she was okay. She was she did a decent job. Even the, even the, even though uh, one was uh, one was the one who played Ursula, she did uh, Megan McCarty, uh, Melissa McCarty, I think it was called. And she she had fun with the role, but the whole insistence of making all these remakes that are soulless and with 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 subpar CGI because they want to imitate real realism instead of you know. Acknowledging that this that, that cartoons have uh, have way more expression than well something that it looks too real, and you're gonna claim it that okay children's gonna like it pop the original or re-release the original, I mean you're re-releasing the pix the Pixar Pixar movies that was on Disney Plus why can't you do that on on the other movies? Course, let's give it also the third award for Aquafina and her scuttlebutt song. Oh my ears! You know what? Let's continue on, or else I'm gonna shit the back with uh, with the Little Mermaid 2023. Ah, God, I wish that movie just pick up a, a concrete and then sink itself to the titanic level under the sea. Number five. Let's continue on with, uh, with uh, Disney property roast. Did I say that... Aquaman was the final nail in the coffin for DC. Let here's another nail to the coffin to to anyone that respected the franchise. My number five is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Boring, boring, boring. I can't believe how you're gonna make a movie that l makes the Crystal uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull look better in comparison. I mean, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull had these problems, big problems. But you know what? At least we remember it. At least we remember the new King of the Fridge. We remember Shia LaBeouf with the monkey. We remember the ants, but Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Okay, let's find something that we're gonna get, remember. We're gonna remember the awkward, the awkward uh, rejuvenation, rejuvenation of, of, of Harrison Ford. We'll remember Mostly Phoebe Waller Greer being an unlikable assistant. 
We remember the kid who has a mustache. We remember Indiana Jones being a wash up. Who, who is sad because he got divorced and his kid died. How can I describe this one? The more I think about it, this is basically just a movie that it was made by committee. And, the mo and I've been saying a lot of times about Harrison Ford. Let the guy retire. You can tell in his face that his love to movie, uh, making movies is gone. He just do it out of committee. He's the grumpiest. He's the grumpiest uh, actor I have seen, and so much that when he says about loving acting, I kind of don't believe it. And and special and how could I? Uh, there was such a tour of a movie, and uh, uh, even the action scenes didn't, didn't feel that good. And, and like I said. Uh, Another, another thing that made this movie terrible is is a Phoebe Waller, uh, what was it, Phoebe Waller or uh, something in which she plays uh, uh, Indiana Jones' uh, goddaughter, I think it, I, I remember, uh, uh, but they wanted to play her up, you know, like a rogue character, but there were many times that she almost tried to kill her relative, and she was unlikable. Even to the point that she didn't feel for for being responsible of of murdering uh, the murder of, of one of Indy's friends. And Indy's, Indiana Joy is like, a friend was killed! And she's like, well, whatever. I got what I wanted. And then, of course, we got the ending in which Indiana Jones was so, so watch out. It, this is something that I have a problem with sequels uh, that, uh, that every time when there's a sequel, it's always, you, you, you had a bad divorce, you're washed up, now you're angry. Find respect to Indiana Jones. Uh, it's funny that South Park, uh, uh, when they criticize Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, they have, they have George Lucas and Steven Spielberg getting away with, uh, uh, with, with Indiana Jones. And this one is Caitlin Kennedy and uh, uh, and Phoebe Waller Greer. Uh, just that. Uh, it's, it's just do me a favor, movie. Just dial up and don't call me again. Number four. <laughs> Another Disney property. How marvelous. The marvel. November was a, quite a month for Disney. It started out with this one, the Marvels, and then and then they had Wish that both of them flopped at the box office. In this case, the Marvels, you can tell that something was wrong in this in that movie. Apart from. It had kind of like the same problems like Aquaman did. Rumors of reshoots. Uh, uh, test audiences didn't like it. Uh, a lot of editing problems. And you know what? Um, it may be number four. And okay, like always, I'm, they're gonna they're gonna accuse me for misogynistic, but no, that that shouldn't be the case. Uh, none of the act lead actress was likable. Uh, and what was it, Alison Brie, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, act, uh, the actress of Captain Marvel, uh, Brie Larson, I think it was called, uh, she, uh, she, she was a little bit better than the last movie, but not by a much, she's still kind of like a wooden stick. The other one, Ra the one who played Ram Rambo, mm, she was fine, but she had a very petty reason about this. And, okay, come on, Khan. Kamala Khan, uh, many people say that she was fine, but I, like I said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, that that character was annoying. <laughs> Sorry about the car. But yeah, Kamala Khan was one of the most annoying characters that there is. And I, I haven't seen the, the Disney Plus show. 
I don't I don't exactly know what it is, but that movie was kind of like the first impression, and she was technically a fangirl who the movie just gave kind of like vague explanation for why she's a fan of Captain Marvel when Captain Marvel's supposed to be doing in secrecy and and well I don't know why there's a big plot hole around it and that's and the way she looks at Captain Marvel is almost like she just wants to have an intimate moment with her I even kind of say that as a joke but other than that, you can tell uh, the kind of uh, the mishmash that this movie had. Yeah, the questionable special effects, the weird space ball kind of like plot, the plot holes, and the convenient way of character development that they tried so hard. Uh, it was done with stupid, stupid things. And let's not forget the number one stupid moment of the movie where they go to this plant, planet Bollywood style uh, style thing. And where everyone started singing and Captain Marvel turns into Cinderella Captain Marvel. And what the hell was that? I don't know. The more I think about that moment, it was like, what the hell? And you know what? Congratulations. That what the hell moment it, it made you reach my top uh, top four of, my, of the worst movie of the year. But now, let's go with my number, number three, two, and one. These are the movies that they boil my brain. The other ones, they did boil my brain. <laughs> But those three, those were the most disrespectful things that I had to give in my brain. But you know what? It, it comes with the territory. Let's go. Number three. Uh, talk about not understanding the source material. Especially considering for me that I watched that series. I have high respect to the series. Most Latin Americans have that respect to the series. But you know what, Hollywood? You didn't get Knight of the Zodiac. That was kind of like the Dragon Ball evolution for Knight of the Zodiac. Poor acting, uh, Americanized style of storytelling without, well, just pick up some of the sword material. They tried something creative, but they still didn't get the source material. And even if you don't get it, you are more with, with a very, very by the number storytelling, really wooden bad acting, uh, uh, bright, very bright and not so good special effects uh, that is combined with the grimy atmosphere. A very cheesy, cringy moment. It's, uh, I know that it's kind of hard to make an adaptation of a story that it can go a lot of places, especially in anime, a a at least in movie form. Uh, but I don't, but you know what? You could uh, you could even I I know that there are ways that you could create and uh, kind of like something different, but yet something refreshing that makes. Uh, that makes it appealing to newcomers. But unfortunately, this one doesn't make justice to people that watch the original Saint Seiya series. I did. I still like Saint Seiya. Uh, it, uh, there are some movies that I like, from, uh, the animated movies that I like, uh, because at least this one, they get what the series is. I haven't seen the Netflix series. Um, I, some people say it was okay, but honestly, that didn't catch me on. Uh, but I did. But I, I had to go to New York to watch that one out of curiosity, and and I didn't expect uh, that this one was so bad and so shallow. It, even even while I was talking with a friend that is also an anime nerd, and he was like. Nope, I'm skipping that. Congratulations, you, uh, uh, you made the work for me. 
And thankfully, this movie, uh, this movie became so forgettable. I almost didn't even remember that it existed until I tried to make the list. Uh, but considering that it came from a property that most Latin America have a kind of like a cult following, yeah, it, it gets my number three. Number two. Just like the Barbie movie, which made a lot of money. This one made a lot of money, but the biggest difference, but one, uh, there's all, but just like also the Barbie movie, he has these defenders, but crazy defenders. But you know what? I'm not a defender. And I still, I'm still proud to say this, that my number two worst movie of the year is Five Nights at Freddy's. God, this movie was so annoying and so infuriating. Oh, it's not for you, it's for the fans. That's no excuse. When you make a movie, you have a more open audience. Some people will watch it out of curiosity or some people that are not fans of it. If you target to the target audience, fans are gonna be fans. It doesn't matter why. Fans, I mean, fans are gonna they have this blind loyalty that they're gonna defend what they like, uh, even even if they don't want to acknowledge where uh, the bad, uh, the horrible things that it has, and they're and they're just gonna be happy just because there's there uh, uh, you're gonna see a toy that they're gonna remember uh, on the screen. They were like, "Yay, he's here! He's here!" Man, uh, this is uh, this is why I had to put it on on the top uh, on the top because it. It represents the worst aspects of fandom. It, that's, uh, if you like, also, yeah, if you like it, fine, uh, fine. But hear me out at least, uh, uh, hear me out. And let's, uh, let's put our feet to the ground uh, and, and look at this. It's not good. And I don't care if it, it made a box, it was a box office success. Because you know what? History also taught us that uh, that box office success doesn't mean uh, that a mo movie is good. I mean, look at movies like, like for example, Crash. It was a box office success, but many people now hated it. Or how about, for example, The Iron Giant. The Iron Giant was a flop at the box office, but it's a great movie. Uh, it, 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 Having you being a successful movie means nothing for me. Uh, uh, okay, if I'm, I'm, I was mostly criticizing the fandom, but let me criticize this, criticize the movie. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's not engaging. The characters are really unlikable. The guy was an ass. The guy was an asshole. The the Karen isn't. Kind of comically insufferable. This little girl was so annoying that it's so annoying that she was just there to play cutesy, and I really don't like forced cuteness. It's so manipulative. It had cheap jump scares. The see, the animatronics were fine. Uh, uh, although there are some moments where you can see some of the limit, uh, some of the limitations. Uh, uh, the, the the story is convoluted. It, 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 there are some moments that it was like, you add this because why? If they wanted to make us feel bad for the anim killer animatronics, and then they shoehorn in, you know, the, uh, the people that are saying, oh, it's faithful to the, it's faithful to the lore. Uh, just. Stick with at least with the original. The origin, at least the original game, it had one simple premise: survive five nights uh, 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 from animatronics that are trying to kill you. There's a there's this plot twist out of nowhere. Uh, it 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 thinks that it just because you have an orchestra string that means that we're gonna get scared. The PG-13 uh, type of movie doesn't even scare. There was only one good kill. 
I'll give it that also. Just one good kill. So, and that's my recipe, res uh, my brief synopsis of why I I really dislike Five Nights at Freddy's. I, I I'm, I'm not a fan. And I think that this movie will not make me a fan of the franchise. And the franchise has gone through better, better things or worse things because I think it was the French. I did hear that the franchise was getting a little bit too family friendly. Because it, uh, what do I expect? I don't care. Hate me all you want. I, I hate me all you want. Uh, you like this movie? Fine. You say this is not for me because I'm not, I'm not part of the fan. But I'm still your audience. Not even worth one night. Okay? I got it all the way. It's time for, for me to reveal the worst trash I have seen this year. The movie that made me so angry. So pissed, so miserable that funnily enough, when I watched that film, I was sick. And when I finished watching it, it made me even more sick. How do you find humor on something like that? I did this to myself just because I wanted to complete the list. The perks of doing all these things. All right. Here it goes. The number one worst movie of this year is I am a cat person. But you know what? I bet you're gonna if if this was a cat movie, it could be even worse. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you dog lovers. I am so sorry. I am so sorry to have to uh, that you have movies that uh, that it's all purpose is to show you dog piss, dog, dog cock, dog tongue, dog jokes, dog poop, dog urine, because that's funny, that's what dogs do, disgusting, that was the most, that was the most disgusting movie I have ever seen. And don't come telling me that it's because you don't like raunchy movies. I I get it. I've seen raunchy movies and there's some raunchy movies that I did like. I like This Is The End for, 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 for starters. I watch South Park. But the problem with raunchy movies is that they kind of have a they kind of have the tendency to almost cross the line from what uh, from what it feels like humor and what is disgusting and 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 for that you need better timing movies like strays doesn't have that it's just about dogs and the, they think that it's just funny because hey look dogs are uh, are urinating hey let's make this Let's make a do uh, four dogs urine each other. No, I'm not kidding. That's what happened. Four dogs pissing on each other as a symbol of friendship. 
And this combined with a really, really mean-spirited, a really mean-spirited uh, premise that it might have, uh, it might have a, how can I say, potential? But no, the execution was mean-spirited. Imagine, this dog, who he thinks that his owner likes him because he's an idiot. When, when in reality his dog, his owner is abusive, he's an alcoholic, he's a total loser, and he just tried to get rid of him. And the guy still, uh, uh, despite that, they tell him that, hey, uh, this guy wasn't a good deal. Okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna bite his dick. Um, and it kind of becomes kind of like this homeward bound style that uh, that it was um, funny and, and you and yeah, you wanted the guy to you know get his come up with because remember, you know what? I'm gonna retract a little bit with the saying that the Five Nights of Freddy's characters were unlikable because uh, because at least there were as uh, these guys are not angels compared to the the uh, the guy the villain of uh, Strays. He was uh, so unlikable that you just wanted to see him to, to get his comeuppance. Even worse than that. And you know what? You'll get half of it. Yeah, but, you know, it's just his dick. Uh, it, he doesn't get arrested or killed, which is our better fate compared to, to what this guy did. But, okay, life is not fair. Uh, they want again. They play out. Uh, there's also this running gag about this big dog that he had this big, uh, big penis, and uh, they just they even wanted to, you know, how can I say to, uh, 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 they wanted to make it into a plot point. And I'm not gonna get into that. And a lot, a lot, lots of dog feces. I already mentioned it. The, the, I already mentioned the urine. It was the unfunny moment, and oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, and there was also shrooms. Shrooms that they that that, that it was like, hey, let's make a a, a drug addicted uh, scene uh, where they're gonna they're gonna showcase uh, the different style of quote unquote animation that only lasts like two or three seconds each. God, I hated this movie. And like I said before, I was sick then that day. And I did this to myself. I don't regret my decision, by the way, of going because you know what? You, 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 uh, this is part of the part of the movie going experience. And you know what? Venting out this anger is in a way healthy. But lo and behold, because it made me bent out that way. This is why I have to give Strays the, the dishonor of being the worst movie of 2023. I hope you like your dog feces and your dog urine because that movie is so full of it. I weep for you, you dog lovers. <sighs> well, that was my list of the worst movie of the year. A good time to purge my uh, my emotions to that. It feels great. 2024 is coming. Uh, what movies are we going to get? What what surprises are we going to get? I don't know. Uh, but whether it be on the good or on the bad, let's... Let's, uh, let's receive 2024 in, with open arms, with a big smile and or a big crown, whatever you whatever it it touches on. So what do you say, Spencer? Do we say it? Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs>